that is your cry take it to God in prayer you want to be to know him well to serve him well you want to be a true person a real Christian you want to be a true Christian a real Christian one that knows the Lord one that is following the Lord one that serves the Lord that I may know him. We want to know Jesus. We want to know Jesus. Ask for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Take this uh, song again in prayer. I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more and more. Jesus, I want to know you more and more, more and more. More and more. That should be your prayer. I want to love you more and more. I want to love you more and more. I want to love you more and more, Father. I want to love you more and more, more and more. More and more, more and more. More and more, more and more. That's your prayer. That's your prayer. Father, I want to serve you more and more. Oh Lord, I want to serve you more and more. Oh yes, I want to serve you more and more. Jesus, I want to serve you more and more, more and more and more. More and more, more and more, more and more, more and more, more and more. Serve you more and Jesus, I want to fear you more and more. Oh Lord, I want to fear you more and more. Oh Lord, I want to fear you more. And more. Redeemer, I want to fear you more and more, more and more and more. More and more, more and more, more and more, more and more, more and more. Oh Lord, I want to fear you more and more. I want to worship more and more, oh Lord. I want to worship more and more. I want to worship more and more, Father. I want to worship more and more, more and more and more. More and more and more. You will go here clean. You will go and worship our God. You go and worship. Jesus, I want to praise you more and more. Oh Lord, I want to praise you more and more. Oh Lord, I want to praise you more and more. Savior, I want to praise you more and more and more and more. You more and more. Our Father, we are so grateful to you. We want more of you. We want to serve you, to praise you, to know you, to fear you, to love you, to worship you. Thank you, divine. So grateful for the message of today. 
we will keep it in our hearts. We will practice it. We will live in this way. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God we're coming to the end of our crusade today. And I'm taking the message, the lifestyle of a true believer. The lifestyle of a true believer. Whether in the Old Testament or in the New Testament, the believer's lifestyle is one. The people in the Old Testament and those of the New Testament serve the same God, have the same spirit of God in them. And God's spirit is the spirit of righteousness. Now, I said this because you will look to the Old Testament and see some infirmities, some weaknesses in some believers, followers of God. And consider the patience and the forbearance of God over them. And think that God does not bother. Or that they died or they ended in that way and went to heaven by it. Yes. You might consider in the Old Testament that Sarah told a lie. And you thought that Sarah remained a liar until she died. And so... God condoned with her, with her lie. You might be thinking so. You might consider some other infirmities of some people. David committed adultery. And you think that lovers of God, prophets of God, commit such sin. And so, died in that way and the Lord allowed them to enter heaven. That is a mistake of your life because when you read in the Old Testament and so sin in any person, moral weakness in any person, I want you, and yet the person is godly. Maybe as David was, you, was, you saw in the life of David, some accounts were, were not clearly true. In fact, some lies were slotted in. You thought he ended like that. You thought that that or your thing, that that type of life was what characterized righteous David. No. And but why did God still deal with him well? Why did God still went along with him and was speaking with, about him and protecting him? The forbearance of God. The patience of God. God plays patience with his people. He plays patience with those who follow him. But that, that he plays patience with their infirmities does not mean it, their type of weakness was an acceptable standard. The same thing appears in our present time. You see people that play infirmity, weaknesses, Play sin. Play some uncleanness in their lives. And yet, they are Christians. Some of them, you wonder, they, they are baptized with the Holy Ghost and they speak in tongues. You say, ah, but this lady, ah, but this man, ah, but this, ah, but that. Why is it that? And the man will give you a prophecy that is true. The woman may do something that looks well. In fact, somebody is sick and she prays for the sick person and the person is healed. Then you say, ah, but this... Oh, so this is how Christianity is. You are just dealing with the patience of God. You're dealing with the forbearance of God. But not the standard. If anybody, it is when we went to, we go to heaven, we shall know who in the Old Testament met it to heaven. Because whether in the Old Testament or in the New Testament, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And the Bible says, 
Better is the end of a thing than the beginning of it. So, that you see people, you see men, you see women, you even see some men of God tell lies. You see some men of God commit immorality. You see some men of God do some things and yet they remain there. And there's appearing to be divine protection. There's a, God is answering their prayers. That is the forbearance of God. It's the patience of God. It's never the standard. If they go on in that way, the judgment of God will overtake them. Don't play with the patience of God. Yes. In the book of Ezekiel, we want to read Ezekiel chapter 36. The Bible tells us in verse 25 to verse 29. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them, and ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. I will also save you from all your uncleanness. I will also save you from all your uncleannesses. And I will call for the corn and will increase it and lay no famine upon you. You can see this is the Old Testament. The Lord is telling them of a standard of righteousness. That the filthiness, the deaths of their lives. He, is, he wants to cleanse it away by the sprinkling of water, the washing of water. He will cleanse it, regeneration, newness of life. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, the true word, very clean water. And I will cleanse you from your idols, those things that you exalt above me, those things you set your heart upon. Be they man or material things. I'm going to cleanse you and purify you. I'm going to take away the stony heart. The heart that is stubborn. That still hears, that hears my word and goes against it. I'm going to take away the stubborn heart from you. I'm going to give you a new heart. A new heart. And I'm going to put my spirit within you. I'll put my spirit the spirit of righteousness, the spirit of holiness, that you will hear my word and do them. Then I will be your God and ye shall be my people. That's the standard. That's the ultimate. If God saw infirmity in anyone and bore with it, it was because he had the ultimate, the standard before him and was leading them there. Waiting for when they would arrive at the standard. That's what I'm telling you. There is a standard. Lifestyle of the believer. Be it in the Old Testament or in the New Testament. Now, we're going to consider the book of um, uh, Galatians chapter 5. Verse 22 and 23. Galatians chapter 5. Verse 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. That is the perfection of the Christian life. The Spirit of God wants to bring you to the perfection of the Christian life. And that is the lifestyle of believers. Lifestyle of believers. The Spirit of Christ 
that you receive is the spirit of love, peace, patience, gentleness, meekness, humility, joy. He is the spirit of righteousness. And the mind of God is that you come to that standard. Come to that standard. That's the mind of God. But then what about the infirmities? I've told you. What about these people with their kinds of dressing? Kinds of attitude? Kinds of life that you look at it? It's unwholesome. It's not complete. It's not real. The way this woman is behaving, she does not portray the complete Christian life. The complete Christian virtue. This man, does not portray, does not manifest the full life of Christ. There are still sins in his life. He tells lies. A minister of the gospel, but he's telling lies. A preacher of the gospel, but he's telling lies. Very zealous in the things of God, but soon angry. Zealous, but soon angry. But there's pride here. The patience of God. Because God is still there. In fact, God is still making some promises over his life. God is still making some promises over her life. God is still making some promises over your life. I will do you good. I will bless your life. Is the patience of God. When you see sin in your life, you have never arrived at the standard. Don't allow the goodness of God, the blessings of God to confuse you. To think that your life has reached standard. Don't allow the fact that God uses you to confuse you. No. If the standard is there. Look at it in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and verse 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be yet transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It is as you come, presenting yourself to God, Holy unto God that he will become acceptable. That is that you become the type he wants. As you conform not to this world in life and in dressing. That is what will cause you to come to the fullness of God. I'm saying this because you palm your hair. You jerichoil it, you paint your lips, you paint your fingernails, but you're speaking in tongues. I'm saying this because your dressings are the dressing of nakedness, but you're speaking in tongues. I'm saying this because you normally tell lies to protect yourself. You normally tell lies, but you're still prophesying. I'm telling you this because God gives you promises. God sends message to you, but you know your life. I am saying you have never come to an acceptable standard. You are still at the realm of mercy. The realm of the patience of God. The, realms of, the realm of the forbearance. The endurance of God. That is still waiting for you to improve and come to his standard. Otherwise, his judgment will overtake you. His judgment will overtake you. Will God keep anger forever? He's just bearing it with you. Wanting you to come to standard. So, why am I saying this, my brethren? We have many people that profess Christianity, but you're not seeing Christianity. We have so many people, they profess Christianity. Some are Christian workers, but the Christian life is not in them. The full Christian standard is not in them. We have people that are zealous. There's no proof of real Christianity. But they're getting content. And others are stumbling because of them. What about sister this? What about brother this? I know what he did, but the Lord is with him. The Lord is with her. 
That's why we are saying this. Brother, don't allow God's patience with another to cause you to stumble. That patience will not go too far. Because if that person abuses the patience of God, the judgment is eternal. Now, I'm going to present to you both in the Old and in the New Testament the standard of the godly life. The way God wants it to be. How you should live the Christian life. That's the standard for heaven. Come up to that level. Walk in that level. In that level. If you want to be a true Christian, don't be down here. Don't be managing in the, in the realm of patience. That's for children. You're not mature. You're not mature. God is just dealing with you as, with patience. But how long? You can't go to heaven in that state. Never. Never. Holy Ghost baptism is not for heaven. So don't think that you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. You speak in tongues and so you're a Christian going to heaven. No. You're, under, you're still under... The, you are still on, under the rim of grace and um, patience waiting for you. I'm um, patience for bearance of God waiting for when you come up. Now I'm going to present the first person we need to study to know about this Christian lie. He is Daniel. Everybody say Daniel. In Daniel, we want to read chapter 1, verse 8. Daniel, chapter 1, verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now, check it here. The believer, the godly man, has determination in of his heart never to allow sin defilement to his life that's the first thing in the godly man the heart is met up the heart is purposed if you really want to please god in the real christian life Come to the point you have made up your mind. You will never be defiled. You will never. You will not allow dirty things upon your life. You will not allow dirty things upon your mind. Be it feeling or thoughts or weights of your mouth. You have that purpose of heart. But Daniel purpose in his heart that he will not defile himself. The first person to consider is yourself, not another. The first person, love your neighbor as you love yourself. You go about preaching the gospel. Have you first considered yourself? The believer will first consider himself. If there's a case between him and another, it is his personal righteousness is interested. Personal righteousness. He will do it in the way he will be blameless. In that case, he can take accusation. He can go the extra mile. He can be a... Why? He does not want anything to tarnish his life. His godly life. He will not want any evil report about him that he, he, he has done this. Never the godly person, the true believer. Again, Daniel purposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank, the pleasures of this world. The believer has made up his mind. This world... With all its pleasures and fancies, shall never rule his life. This world. So, if he's a man, the beauties of this world is nothing. His heart is not over the beauties of this world. The beauties of women, beauty of material things, nothing. As long as it, yeah, these are the sinful things that are in this world, his mind is not there. He is so much, his mind is with God, he despises the fancies of this life. 
money. All this money you're running about, not for a true Christian. His mind is not there. He's not running after money for money's sake. No. If he's doing anything to earn money, it's because he's in this life, money answered all things. He must get money for this and that, but his heart is not there. He can never accept defilement in his life because of money. Not the godly Christian, the godly man. Cannot. Purpose in his heart. Why did Daniel refuse to take the portion, the, the king's meat and the wine that he drank? They first sacrificed those things to idols. They killed them and poured their blood to idols. And they poured the wine to idols and then bring the rest. Because that's, that's where their faith is. Daniel said, I cannot partake of the table of devils. He made up his mind like that. That's a Christian. Not these ones that are going about. A little thing. You, you have self defilement. Things are going about. You run. You jump. Even entering your vehicle. Entering vehicle, you push another one. Christian, never. Everybody said never. I'm talk, telling you Christianity. That's the standard that God has. Anything short of this is the patience of God that you are still calling yourself a Christian. It's the patience of God. He has a standard of Christianity. Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Can you see the practical effort to keep righteousness? The practical effort done to keep righteousness. He went to make request of the eunuch the leader of the place, that please, I will not defile myself. It would take step. You cannot stand righteousness in that place. You are afraid. I'm saying all this Christianity you're managing there, fearing men and compromising. You have not come to the standard. But God is still hearing my prayer. The patience of God. It's a patient God. Waiting for, when maybe you hear a message like this and know that, oh God, so you have been bearing with me. Patience of God. See the effort of this man. This man will go to any length to make sure he maintained his purity. He will do everything. Restitution, Daniel would do every restitution. See, he went to request in the institution where Nebuchadnezzar the king selected a few people and he was one of them in that institution. And they, in those days, any little thing, you will be killed. Any little thing, you will be killed. But he would still dare to deny himself and reject the food the king provides. Why? He must be righteous. What am I saying to you? Christianity? Godly life? A life above defilement. A life that is above defilement. A determination to do everything that can keep you above defilement. A determination to do everything that will make sure sin, evil, dirty thing, in your, in Christ, in dirty thing morally should never come near you. That is Daniel. Now look at Daniel again chapter 6. Talking about this Daniel, in chapter 6, verse 1, to verse 10, to verse 11. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might, have accounts unto, might give accounts unto them. And the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom but they could find none occasion of fault for as much as he was faithful neither was there any error found or fault found in him. Then said this man we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then, these presidents and princes 
assembled themselves to the king and said, Thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the, captain, um, and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask the, a petition of any god or man for thirty the self of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the murders and patience, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Then this man assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Verse 16. Then the king commanded and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. Then in verse 20. And when the king came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and hath shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. For as much then, for as much as before him, innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded, and they brought, uh, commanded that they should bring, they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner of heart was found upon him. Everybody, because he believed in his God. Can you see Christianity? This is the standard. These are the people that go to heaven. He was walking under the realm of Darius, an office worker, a staff of the government. The people looked for fault on him and could find none. Faithful. He was faithful in all matter. Why? An excellent spirit was in him. The spirit of righteousness. The spirit of God. Are you saying this excellent spirit is in you? And you are doing this to telling lies? This experience, excellent spirit? I'm telling you is the patience of God. The patience of God. An excellent spirit is for the purpose of excellent life. The spirit of God is, the, is for excellent life. They looked for fault they could not find. Then they now said, King, for 30 days nobody should pray to any other God except, the, or except you. If anybody did, he should be killed, destroyed. Daniel had died. I'm talking about Christianity. Not this little fear, this fear that you're fearing. Daniel heard that the decree of death had been attached to the worship of God. It didn't alter him. It didn't change him. Not these fearful people. Not these fearful people. Fearing me. Fearing your husband. My husband said, so you can't fear, serve God anymore? You can't do the will of God? My husband said, if I come and see you, I'm not talking, it's the forbearance of God. The patience of God that is dealing with you. You have not come up to the standard of Christianity that puts your husband under the feet of Jesus. For everything must be brought under his feet. I'm telling you, that brings every man under the feet of Christ. Who again sits with the throne, sit with God on his throne? Is there anybody? What are you created for? Are you created for yourself? That you think that, no, I want to live for myself, I want to protect my life. You can't die for this God. God brought you to this life, he cannot take your life for his name. 
I'm telling you, all this fearing for your life, fearing because of your enemy, fear is because you are in the management level of Christianity. You have not come to the standard where to live or to die is gain. You have not come to that standard. So that's not that you're, you're in the lower level of Christianity. And that is the realm that you will never go to heaven. For without holiness, no man can see the Lord. Except you can give God his place. And humble man to come under the feet of Jesus. If you will be bringing Jesus, that Jesus should be the one to go under the feet of man. Under the feet of government. Under, under the feet of a husband. Under the feet of a wife. I'm telling you. You can't make it. Can't make it. That's the Christianity that has filled the world now. Compromisers. Compromisers. Look at standard Christianity here. Standard. Dead, he accepts it. He accepted to die. Nothing diminished in his worship of God. Total commitment. He is serving this God because he was created for him. Nobody can come between him and God. Nobody. May God revive this Christianity. That's what we're looking for. And that is what required for the last days. You heard that someone went to heaven by revelation. is by this standard. That person met this qualification to be there. Make it. Not, uh, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus said it now. He said, all the years, this sister was doing Christianity. Yes, in that level of patience and forbearance, she never arrived at my perfect level of going to heaven. Until just the last one year, when she was introduced to my holiness. Welcome to God's holiness. If you want to go to heaven, come into God's holiness and live the life of heaven. Life of heaven. Daniel purposed it in his heart. He made up his mind. I will make it. I'm going to live a perfectly undefiled life. Money can never defile me. Man can never defile me. My husband can never reduce righteousness in one point. I disdain marriage. I, I look down on marriage. If God gave me marriage, he let him take it away. For his name's sake, I release this marriage. Plus the children that are in the marriage. Because God created me and want me to be holy, you say, hey, you are a husband. Keep quiet with that type of mouth. Are you getting what I'm saying? We need this type of life to be able to go to heaven. Otherwise, you will follow the path of the others and end up in hell. Despite that you speak in tongues. Despite that you prophesy. Whatever you say. Now I've talked about Daniel. I'm going to take a, talk about Nathaniel. In the book of John chapter 1. Nathaniel. John. I read chapter 1 verse 43 to 49. The Bible tells us here. Saying. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and said unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And Philip findeth Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did ride, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the son of God, thou art the king of Israel. Can you, let's see this. That's the voice of God. Now, take this. Before Philip even met you, you were under the tree. The divine eye saw you. I saw you. God is happy with you. 
Because not all that are Israel that are actually Israel. They are Israel after the flesh. They are Israel not according to promise. They are Israel not according to the faith of Abraham that had righteousness. But I saw you. You really got the God of Israel. Behold, an Israelite indeed. In whom there is no guile. This is God speaking of a person. He said, there's no lie in your life. There's no pretense in your own life. There's no hypocrisy in your own life. There's no, nothing hidden, no darkness in your own life. You are sincere in godliness. Sincere in the faith of, of God. Total and full. Commit, committed. Fully dedicated to the God of Israel. And Israel indeed. Oh, that is the Christian I'm talking about. The lifestyle of a believer. There's no pretense. There's no hypocrisy. There's no lie in your mouth. No lie in your action. You are a man in whom there is no guile. There is no sin. There is no pretense. You're not hiding anything there. Look at you here. You're hiding many things. Some of you, oh, don't put on this thing. Don't put on that one. You say, this one is too costly for me. You are still hiding that. That's not Christian. I mean, that is the level of the forbearance of God. You are in the level of the patience of God. You have not come to the point of a Christian indeed. One in whom there is no hypocrisy. No lie. No pretense. Sincere and godly. That's the Christianity we are talking about. Not the ones that are hiding things. Hiding truths. Hiding information. Hiding even some of these are questing. You bury them in your house. You put them in your box. They are there. Your jewelry is still there. Although they are off from your ear, they are there in the box. They are there. Your wedding ring is still there. Although it's not in your finger, it is there in your box. I'm not talking about those ones. And then you sing, you jump, and then you come and be doing this dance that you do here. You did here today. An Israelite indeed. That God will see you and say, this is a Christian. That as you see him is total. As he has spoken is total. As he has declared it is total. Everything about him is as he has said. A true Christian. There's nothing hidden anywhere. Go and check his record. He, it will be as you have seen it. Go and ask others. It will be as you have heard. No another thing anywhere. That's the Christian we're talking about. These are the people the Lord has saved. These are the people the Lord is taking to heaven. Complete, wholesome, be perfect. Even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. Sins are forgiven. Blessed is the man whose iniquity is pardoned. Whose transgressions are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. In whose mouth there is no guile. Lies in your mouth. Anger in your heart. Hatred in your mind, in your heart. God knows that. That's not the Christianity we're talking about. We're talking about high Christianity. High standard Christianity. That God will say, I saw you with divine eye. Even when human beings cannot see. When you were under the tree. Where nobody saw, I saw it. Before they met with you, I saw you in your house. I saw you in your inner room. I saw you when you travel out. I saw you when you were dealing with that person. I saw, and this is a true Christian. May the Lord do it. May the Lord make you one. Do I say the Lord is the one to make you so that you wait for the Lord? No, make yourself one. Come up to that standard. These are the people. That God wants Nathaniel, an apostle of Jesus, a disciple of Christ, a preacher of the gospel, specially selected for this work. No lie in his mouth. Preacher, is there lie in your mouth? You are in the level of divine patience. And you, he can't take you too far in that way. Somebody says you can't manage a bad tire for too long. You can't manage a bad tire for a long distance. 
you're traveling far and your tire is making a chuckle, 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 you are moving, that tire will pull out on the way. Get that thing perfected. Get that lie out of your mouth. Come to that level of perfection. Then let's go to Anna, the book of Luke, the Anna, the prophetess. Luke chapter 2, verse 36 to 38. Luke chapter 2, verse 36 to 38. The Bible tells us here saying, And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asa. She was of a great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about four score and four years which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption to, in Israel or redemption in Jerusalem. Now, Anna was married at this time, he was, she was 84 years. She had married, and when she married, seven years to her, in her marriage, her husband died. So, she was a widow for 77 years. Righteous and godly. Righteous and godly. What did she do? To keep herself from sin. What did she do? To keep herself from sin. Constant prayer and fasting. Watch and pray that ye may not enter into temptation. Watch and pray. This woman was dedicated to the Lord. Dedicated. Not this ones. The pastors are sleeping with them. They are serving in the church, but they are for pastors, concubines to pastors, to men of God. So that they can, they are, their position in the church is because of men of God, because of what they do for men of God. No! Righteous, committed, dedicated, her hands held the righteous child, Jesus. She spoke of Jesus. Spoke of Jesus. Why? Why did God give her this privilege? She was righteous. She was clean. Not a backbiter. Not grudging. Angry. Everybody is against me. And so you are also against everybody. <laughs> Never had Anna. Committed. Righteous. Clean. Flies never landed on her. The flies of sin. The flies of evil. The flies of backbiting and gossip. Never landed on that widow. She was not going from house to house to spoil things there. To report wives to their own husbands. Never. She was not begging money from people. She had faith in the living God. Her faith was in God. The God of supply. Who supplied all her needs. So she was not begging. The Lord was the one giving to her. She was not looking pitifully. Everybody pity me. You see me now. My husband has died. You see me now. This, I don't have anything for my children. Not Anna. Not Anna. You are going about begging people and say you are Christian. They are begging on the street. They carry something. Everybody give money. You know, we have orphanage. 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 And you are begging about. And by your begging, they are corrupting you. Telling lies. Going about saying, since yesterday I didn't eat. You really didn't eat? Bringing up, fabricating stories. I am a widow. I am like that. This level of Christianity, and yet you have wonderful testimonies to do. Some of those things God really did for you, but in his patience. Not because you have come to the standard of Christianity. It is in his patience. Are you going to live in patience? Are angels in heaven now on patience? Are they living on account of patience in heaven? The saints that are, inter that are inside heaven now, are they there because God is patient? No, they qualified. If you will continue there and say, God will keep on giving you patience, that will not take you to heaven. Change that life and come to standard Christianity. 
Standard respect for God. Honor for your body. Honor for your personality. Without defilement that ants will not come and be sucking from you. Flies of iniquity will never land upon your life. Prayerful. Giving herself to fasting. Then we we'll look at the life of Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. May God grant you understanding of this thing that you will not remain in the level of the management Christianity. Level of patience. God is bearing you with you. How much you bear with your child that cannot walk, cannot walk fast to follow you. How much you are waiting patiently when the child can run. How much are you waiting patiently when there should be improvement, when there should be maturity? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10, Ye are witnesses, and God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. Ye are witnesses. <laughs> there is the gospel of grace which people are carrying about now. Preachers are preaching it. Preachers are preaching it. Gospel of grace. The grace of God. If you talk about you must do this, you must do this, you must do this. Where is the place of grace? Where is the place of grace for Paul who said you are witnesses? God in heaven is witness. Also, how holily, where is then the place, we behaved ourselves. Where is then the place of grace? It is the grace that made Paul to be holy. It's not the grace that will keep you in your sin. I say, where is grace? Where is grace in Paul's life? Grace was there because grace made him holy. How holily and justly, equally, if we are judging a matter, if we are taking a decision, see how equally, see how righteously we do it. Justly. Justly. Do we now act falsely and say, grace, grace covers me? No, no grace. Amen. How justly we behaved ourselves. You, when you saw us, did you see iniquity in our lives? When you walk with us, so that we won't be saying, no, that area is covered with grace. That area is covered with grace. That's what they're preaching today. Fake ministers walking on grace alone, committing sin, and he's saying it is grace. The grace of the pastor is higher than that of a member. So, if the pastor commits a higher sin, don't, don't be condemning pastor because he has higher grace. Is that the grace of Paul? It was Paul a sinner? How holily we behaved ourselves among you that believe. That's it. That's the Christianity. That's the Christian minister. All these ministers that you see committing sin, telling lies, cheating, doing all these fake things or doing all these things in the church and some of them speak in tongues, if they are Christians truly, it is at the level of patience. They can never go to heaven. They are, they, they are vessels unto dishonorable use. Vessels. They are vessels. The Lord is putting them into use. Yes, they are building churches. They are building churches and are increasing the city. They are increasing the size of the city. And are putting human beings and, and, and are taming them. Telling them some things to at least keep some of them until they are, they are able to have the, the salvation of Christ indeed. So they are doing something. Vessels unto dishonorable use. Vessel unto honor is holy. Just. Blameless. I'm telling you minister. Your weaknesses. You do tell lies. You lust after the women you, you are pastoring. You lust after them. You demonstrate pride. It is at the level of divine mercy that you are still there. The level of divine mercy. You are not a standard minister by gospel standard. You are not. 
You are not the type that will receive reward. You are not qualified for it. Eternal reward is not for you. Because your life is not clean. Your service is not clean. It shall be burnt up by fire. The fire will consume it. And you yourself will not escape the fire. Even you will be tried by fire and you won't escape. Except you come to higher standard of holiness. Righteousness. All these teachings were teaching people, keep yourself from jewelry, is defilement. Your palming is defilement. Wearing trousers and doing this. You, you are not teaching them. You are just keeping them and saying it's grace. All of you are in that church for mercy. You are under the rim of patience. Because the end has not come, that's why you are there. When the end comes, God shall count you like Muslims. Because you are, you are, you are not vessels unto honor. There will be no difference between you and the other people in the world. Like the pagans. I'm telling you this. So that you won't be thinking that the miracle you do mean anything. You won't be thinking that, hey, God used me to do miracle. God gave me testimony. God gave me revelation. Those revelations are because, come, the old prophet that backslid, old prophet that the devil used to, to destroy the life of the young prophet in Samaria. Did he not prophesy? Prophesy the prophecy that came true. We God cannot find anyone, he manages the one that is available. But will he now boast and say, I'm a man of God? Not the God of righteousness. Not the God of holiness. Therefore, take care of your life. Take care. If you want God, come to the level of holiness and preach it. Teach it. Stand for it. Otherwise, you're walking in vain. That's what we're letting you know. Know it now. Yes, how holily justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you. What is the present Christianity therefore that we are fighting against? What is your own type of Christianity supposedly that we are fighting against is the soulish type of Christianity. King Saul's type of godliness. Look at it in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15. First Samuel, chapter 15, the Bible tells us in verse 13 and 14. Verse 13 and 14. And Samuel came to Saul and said, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. <laughs> they have language. They have language. And, the, and Samuel said, What minute then this bleating of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? The Christianity or the godliness of Saul is to touch some little, little things of, of, of God. Touch it, touch it like that. And burst for it with bald flesh. They have spiritual language. The Lord sent Saul to go and destroy, kill, the, clear the Amalekites and their descendants because they were wicked and they did evil against God. And the Lord promised to wipe them out. Saul, go and carry out this assignment for me. Wipe out everything, including the animals, everything. Saul went, did something. And selected the big, a good, good animal for himself and speared the king Agak and brought him alive to show how great King Saul is. And when Samuel came, he blessed Samuel. Ma, bless, blessed are thou, Samuel. They have language. They have language to speak. Bless you. The Lord is with you. They are using language. God told me. God spoke to me. The Lord opened my eyes to see. You think true Christians are speaking to you? Black, I, I have performed the will of the Lord. Take care of those people you marry. They have great religious language, but they don't have the life. Then, with all this boasting and boldness, they carry a lot of boldness, courage, boldness. Samuel then said, if you say you have arrived to the level of godliness, 
If you say you are walking in obedience to God, what then is the meaning of the voice of sheep that are crying now? That I am hearing, that have come from the land of the Amalekites. What about the voice of cow? That I am hearing now. That you have brought from the Amalekites. Where are you dancing up and down saying you are a Christian with the noise around you? Reports about you. About your family life. About your business life. About relationship between you and somebody else. Relationship between you and some people. Some of your husband, your wife. About this. These things are going on and you are boasting that you are a Christian. Which type of Christian is that? Eh? Which type of Christian is that? You left home, your, wife, your husband was not aware, and you traveled and went somewhere for about two weeks. You, where are you from? He said, you went to, to the mountain. Mountain to go and do what there? Mountain, I went to seek the face of the Lord. And when I went there, God gave me wonderful revelation. The God that said you should be subject to your husband gave you wonderful revelation on the mountain. I'm telling you that you should not be hearing the voice of these people. Are you hearing me? This is somebody who left the husband. The husband didn't know what to do. Will he, will he go to police and ask where my wife went to? They should announce in the radio. Will he ask from where? The neighbor said they were not aware. You say it's Holy Ghost that moved you to the mountain. Voice of human beings. If you want to show you are righteous, lay your fruit. Bring forth fruit. Meet for your righteousness. Show us by your life. Your godly life. Your godly humble life that you are a Christian. Humble lie. Not the thing you do and their complaints run about you. Complaints run about you. Green hairs are on your head. Green hairs. They're, they're very zealous. But what about this palming on your hair? What about this attachment? What about this gold? Gold rings. What about all these rings in your hands? What about all this your body exposing mini smooth skate? This your smooth skate. You are busy. So I am for God. You are demonstrating. Oh, let there be praise. I went to preach somewhere. A woman who sat in the church there, it was a women conference. A, a woman was there in the church, I mean, the meeting. She did not cover her hair. She sat there with her terrible Jezebelic appearance. Do you know what is Jezebelic? So, while I was preaching, the preaching was so wonderful. He wa it was so wonderful that he wanted to raise chorus and sing. I said, hey, 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 hey. I'm preaching so that you go and change your life. You want to sing? Which type of singing is that? You want to sing away my message? To show you have zeal. Tell me where is your zeal as I'm looking at your body now. Tell me, if in your head you didn't cover, which Holy Ghost is moving you with zeal down? Are you getting what I'm saying? That's the Christianity of our time. The fake walk that people are doing. Showing mouthy things, but really spirit is, nothing is there. So please, what we are saying, come to the level in which there's no cloud in your life. Come to the level in which there's no darkness in your life. Thoroughly purge yourself. Thoroughly cleanse yourself. Demonstrate real humility and submission to your husband. Demonstrate real love to your wife. Let the neighbor see Christ in you. That's the Christianity we need. Again, we see the, 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 the sons of Eli kind of godliness. Look at it. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 2, verse 17. 1 Samuel, chapter 2, verse 17. The Bible says, Wherefore, the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord, for men abhorred the offerings of the Lord. They were the priests in the temple, two of them. They made Christianity, they made the service of God a hard thing. A bitter thing. People hated to serve God because of them. But they were priests. They were the one burning 
incense to God. And they will, they will dress in a way you should honor them. And they will be carrying some dignified service. <laughs> some of these people, when they are giving Holy Communion in their church, you think they are serious people. They are immoral people. You would think the way they are ordering themselves, you think they are very serious. You would think they are a living living. They are alive. See these ones here. The Bible tells us they were sleeping with the women that waited in the temple. These priests sleeping with the women, yet serving God, carrying out functions. Where should carrying out functions? We are father. Or oh, some of them said they will not marry. Or oh, the, the, the law, their law said they should not marry. But the hazard they do, the immorality they commit. And yet, in coming to function, you see, oh, this is dignified function. Dignified function. My brother, it's not your dignified function. It's the character and the life. Is the character and the life of godliness that is the paramount thing and not service and not coming forward and offering prayers that is shaking everywhere. Prayer that is shaking. Everybody said, This is the man of God. When he handled the microphone, everywhere was shaking. It's not the shaking of place, your life, the life of godliness. The service of God. People hated the service of God. Many people don't go to church today because of the way offering is being offered. Be because of the way offering is abused by some men of God. But they, are no, they no more go to church. Uh, let's go to church now. I don't have offering. I don't want to go and be embarrassed there. The house of God is being hated now. The service of God is being hated because of money. So, that's the type of Christianity. Ministers or ministry, sons of Eli, carry it out. Don't be like them. Be original. Be true. Be a real minister. A real Christian. The one that is original from your heart. Again, the Judas kind of discipleship. Judas is carried out. Everybody said Judas is carried. Yes. Look at it in the book of John, chapter 12. Verse 4 to verse 6. John, chapter 12. Verse 4 to verse 6. Then said one of his disciples, Judas is carried, Simon's son, who should betray him. Where was not this ointment sold? For 300 pence and giving to the poor. This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the back and bear what was put therein. Here was someone following Jesus from place to place. In every crusade of Jesus, he was there. Every conference of Jesus, he was there. He was there and so was respected. The honor of Jesus was upon him. They respected him. The food they gave Jesus, he ate it. Ate with others. In fact, he was chosen to be the treasurer. The one keeping the money. That they brought to the ministry of Jesus. He was the one keeping that money. See, this type of man, he was, he, listen to what he said. He said, then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence? He knew the value of money. He knew. The value of money. And see, and giving to the poor. Judas apparently would behave that. He had compassion, sympathy on people. 
he will behave that he loves people. A pretender. A pretender. And giving to the poor. And the Bible says, this he said, not that he cared for the poor. He will show you that he cares. He does not. Not that he cares for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the back and bear what was put therein. Zeal, but a thief. Zeal, but a thief. He was the one collecting the, the, and the usher in the church. He would come very early and sweep the church. And arrange the chairs. He is the one helping you not to sleep. Hey, hear the word now. He is the one taking good care of you. You think he's taking good care of you. He has a mind. He's examining how much each one of you is dropping into the offering bag. And he knew how to get the money for himself. He knew it. And year to year, you have been doing it. How to get it? You know. Somebody said, uh, somebody who had gotten a lot of this money, a lot of this money in one of these churches, Lord, bought chairs in his house, did many decorations. The wife was eating Rice and stew, very plenty. Without knowing where the money was coming from. Coming from the church. And the name of God. Zeal. Who will go to this place? Pastor, I will do it. Pastor, I will do it. And you think you're dealing with a serious person. Sinners. Are you not the one? You show zeal, but you are a sinner. You show zeal. You show compassion over, oh, I have compassion. Is that what you're suffering in your father, in your, with your husband? Your mind is after that woman for immorality. Your mind is after that woman for immorality. Your mind is corrupt. That's the Christianity. But that's not the standard. And you do many things there in the name of God. But God knows that you are there. God knows. Have I, just, have I not chosen you 12 by 1 is a thief? Was he not aware that he was a thief? Even when Jesus, other people left Jesus, he said, will you not go away? They said, whom shall we go? Judas said, ah, whom shall we go? Where do I find cheap money again? To where shall I go? Christianity is sweet to you because of what you gain. Not because of righteousness. Not because of the promise of heaven. Fallen man. That's your state. So, that's what we are saying. Then, we have the, the Christianity or the godliness of Je Jezanel, son of Shaphan. In the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 6 to 12. Ezekiel chapter 8. Verse 6 to verse 12. The Bible now says, the Bible says unto us, chapter 8, verse 6 to 12. He said further unto me, son of man, seest thou what they do, even the, great, even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary, but turn thee, turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. And he brought me to the door of the court. And when I looked, and behold, a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw. And behold, every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jezanir, the son of Shaphan, with every man his cinzer in his hand. And a thick cloud of incense went up. Then said he unto me, Son of man, 
Hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery. For they say, the Lord seeth us not. The Lord had forsaken the earth. Can you see it now? These are the elders. They are the ones sitting at the stage. The elders. They are the ones sitting at the stage. <laughs> sitting at the stage. But watch them. The Lord say, do you know what they do in the secret? They are in secret society. Come, I will tell you to go, I will take you to go and see them. And I saw a hole in the wall. He said, dig the hole. They are hidden in the way ordinary man cannot see. In fact, you will not see except God tells you where they are. You will not know it. Dig the hole. I dug through the hole in the wall. Hey, these are the elders of Israel. The ones that sit to judge judgment in Israel, the ones that are leading the godly nation of Israel, I see every man with his censor and with the image uh, uh, and with the image of his idol before him. Eh? I say, eh? Are these not the ones that conduct the church service? Are these not the preachers of the church? Are these not the leaders? Eh? And I saw Jezaniah, the son of Shaphat, the leader, the leader himself. I saw him. He was backing me. I'm facing his own image. Then you come out and be telling us we're Christians. You come out and be performing with some powers. And be doing me and people are falling down. He said, and people are falling down. You are getting it from over there. And you come and declare it. And say, God, in the name of Jesus, you throw handkerchief. Those that are catching the handkerchief go to fall down. They say, it's power from heaven. You are getting it over there from secret society. You are burying things around about your church. We think you are a Christian. We think so. It's only God that can reveal it. Only God. And you do it and think that nobody knows. God knows. And the man that the Lord gives special revelation knows. That person the Lord has given special revelation knows. The reason why it has not come to light is because it's not yet time. It's not because you're wise. It's not because you're technical. It's because your time has not yet come. God is careful. Do I root them out? Mm -mm. It's not every kind you root out. Because you will also root up the, the wheat along with it. But when the fullness of time comes, your nakedness shall be revealed. Because there's nothing here that can never, that can never be revealed. Nothing that is hidden that can never be known. That's what God has said. That which you're doing in the secret, the immorality you go to do in the secret shall be revealed. It has not been revealed because it's not your time. God has his time. And these, are, these last days, the Lord is revealing these fake people because the last is the last time. Children, it is the last time. So God is revealing them, opening their secret. Causing them to know them. So that those people who mean for true Christianity will serve the Lord. Will get delivered from their hands. They will now know, okay, no wonder. That's why there's no righteousness here. Apart from this, I see many things in, in his life. I myself see. I only didn't understand until the Lord revealed. What am I saying? The lifestyle of a true believer. The lifestyle of a true believer, perfect and true, righteous and clean. The lifestyle of a true minister is the same. Righteous and true, clean. These are the people that make it to heaven. But as for others, leave them yet. 
Let them show. Let me, let me dig around them and pour manure upon them and watch what will happen next year. The patience of God. God is want, watching whether you will come out of that state into a higher Christian life. He's patient with you. He's not content with what you're doing. But he gives you food. He does goodness to you. He answers prayers. Mercy of God. Will you continue in mercy and perish? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Will you, now, will you provoke God to jealousy? Will you fool God? That you will be eating from God and eating from Satan. Will you fool God? It's because he knows Satan can give you nothing. That's why he has still been given to you. Although you are still touching from Satan. God knows Satan cannot give you anything. He knows you will go hungry. You will become destitute. And in his patience, despite your connection with Satan, he's still showing you kindness. You think you are wise? Are you thinking you are wise? The patience of God. You will reason. You are going to stand up and reason. How do you want to live this Christian life? I've shown you the standard. Up there, holiness and righteousness. Holiness. For without it, you will not see the Lord. This fake Christianity, lower Christianity they teach you in your church, is not for heaven. It's for this world, not for heaven. If you want to come to this world for heaven, Daniel purposed in his heart, no iniquity. Let's rise up upon our feet. Daniel purposed it, no iniquity. If that is the Christianity you want, beautiful, that's fine. I'm going to pray for you. For the spirit of this perfect Christianity. We're living it here. For you. We're calling you to it. That's how we live. That is how we live. That is how we live. Like Daniel. We are watchful every day. No lie must come out of our mouth. No sin. No defilement. We are inviting you to this life. We're inviting you to it. Close your eyes and tell God you want it. Tell God you want it. Let him give you grace for it. Grace is for holiness, not for sin. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Is grace given to make you sin more? your righteousness exceeded that of the scribes and Pharisees, you can by no means enter into the kingdom. Except your righteousness goes beyond what they're doing in the churches today. <laughs> you can by no means enter into heaven. Christian that will go to heaven. A Christian that will go there. Righteous. Not the one playing, hiding things. Telling lies. Protecting yourself with lies. An Israelite indeed in whom there is no guile, no hypocrisy, no lying, no pretense, no deceit. That is how God wants you to be, a Christian indeed. Hey, give me that all-time religion. I need that all-time religion. It was good for John and Peter. It was good for Mary and Martha. 
It was good for Paul and Silas. It is good for me. That old time religion. That is the one you need now. Old time religion. Old time. That's what you need. Ask for it. Old time religion. Ask for it. Ask for the spirit of old time religion. Your dressing must be to standard. Not all these naked things. Narrow skates that you're wearing. Tight fittings. Body, body hawk type of blushes you're putting on. No. Standard. God is just patient with you. Patient. You'll be sitting down opening your nakedness to people. God is just patient with you. That's not the standard of dressing. In Jesus' name we pray. Make me worthy. Make me worthy. Make me worthy. All oh, in the morning, in the night, any time you may come. Make me worthy, O oh Lord. Make me righteous. Righteous Father, make me righteous, Lord. Sing it well with all your heart to him. In the night. Time come. Righteous, oh Lord, make me humble, humble, oh yes, humble. Oh my God, in the morning. Make me holy, holy Jesus. Make me holy, Lord. Oh, my God, morning in the night, any time you may come. Make me perfect, make me perfect, Jesus. I want to be perfect, Lord. Oh, my God, morning in the night, any time you may come. Make me spotless, make me spotless, Jesus. I want to be spotless, Lord. Kai, Jesus, we worship. Thank you. I want to tell you that the, the presence of God is here. I can feel the glory of God. Just raise up your hand and wave at him. The presence of God is here. Wave at the Lord. Wave at Jesus. I can feel him. I can see him in the eye of my heart. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Glory, I can feel him. Lord, we love you. We are happy to have you in our midst. 
Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Impart your righteousness upon your people. Open your mouth and talk to him. Let him come to you. Impart your righteousness upon your people. Lord Jesus, I can see your presence. Oh Lord, pour your righteousness. Oh Lord, pour your holiness upon your people. Pour your grace. Pour your purity. Sanctify your people. Oh Lord, do it. Purify them with the blood of Jesus. Sanctify them with the water of life. Purify them with the clean water. Thank you, Jesus. Oh Lord, I'm so happy. Lift them up to the higher Christian, Christian life. Lift them up to higher Christian life. Higher Christian life. Yes, the presence of God is here, my brother. The presence of God is here, my sister. Lift them up. Lift them up, Jesus. Lift them up, Jesus. Yes, Lord, to the higher Christian life. Higher Christian life. Holy Christian life. Holy Christian life. Lift them up. 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 The presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord. The holiness of the Lord. He wants you to be lifted up. Invite Jesus into your life. Invite Jesus into your life. Invite Jesus into your life. Invite Jesus. Invite Jesus. His presence is here. His presence is here. Invite him. Invite him. Let Jesus walk on your life. Let Jesus walk on your life. Let Jesus walk on your life. The presence of the Lord is here. Jesus wants to perfect you. Jesus wants to purify you. The presence of the Lord. The holiness of God. The holiness of God. The holiness of God. Our God is holy. Our God is holy. Our God is holy. Come to his holiness. Come to his holiness. Come to his holiness. Come to his holiness. Open your heart for him. Open your heart for him. Let him cleanse you. Let him cleanse you. Let him cleanse you. Hey. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We rejoice. Thank you, Lord. We are partaking of your holiness. We are partaking of your righteousness. We are partaking of your righteousness. We are partaking of your holiness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The holiness of God. The holiness of God. The holiness of God. The power of God is coming down. Power of God is coming down. Power of God is coming down. The power of God. The power of God. The power of God. The power of God is coming down. It's coming down. The power of God is coming down. The power of God. Yes. Yes. His holiness. His holiness. His holiness. His holiness. Receive Jesus. Receive Jesus. Receive Jesus for a new life, a clean life, a holy life, free from sin, free from hypocrisy. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat>
Jesus name we pray commitment to righteousness you will be committed your Christianity has changed from today Daniel purpose in his heart those people that are getting you cheaply to commit immorality with you it has ended today they cannot come anymore those lies that you tell I'm telling you you're going to confess those lies they will never come out of your mouth again standard Christianity fearing your husband because your husband who is he what can your husband do can he create life can he destroy one he has no power he can do nothing good or bad without the permission of god god wants people that will exalt him in these days that women are cleansing themselves the devil cannot use any husband to come and say if you don't put on it who are you talking please keep up shut up that bar quickly shut it up before God gets angry with you and you disappear from the earth. Let the people be free to serve the Lord. He is God. Fear him above man. Fear him above any authority. He is above all authority. He is above all men. This is the time we shall restore the fear of God back to him. Raise up your hand and restore back the fear of God. Tell God you will fear him. You will respect him. You will honor him above man, above authority. Death will never, will, will never cancel the fear of God in your life. You will fear God above your husband. Marriage can never make you compromise. No man can make you compromise. You are ready to die for him. Tell God you are ready to die for him. Thank you, Jesus. That is good. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now, you put down your hands. You want to give your life to Jesus Christ. You are ready for this new life. I mean, you have not been born again. Can you raise up your hand? You want to give your life to Jesus. Very quickly. We are ready for true Christianity. True one. As you are coming in here, Tell yourself that when you leave this place, sin has died. Come forward. Come forward. When you leave this place, no more sin. Just come right inside here. When you leave this place, no more sin. Not the one that you will come and go, but no, not this one, not the one you are coming today. When you leave this place, iniquity has finished. You are going to obey completely. All this teaching about jewelry, palming, that's the end today. You are not going to use them again. You are not going to do it. Christianity, we want to bring it back to the original. Give me that old time religion. Give me that. I need that. Father, give me that. Close your eyes and sing and pray. Give me that. I need that. Now tell God you want true Christian life. That is what you want. Tell him like that. True Christian life. Yes. Jesus, I want to be truly a child of God. Tell him. Truly, my life must change today as I'm standing now. I want to put on a garment of righteousness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Worship you, Father. Thank you. I'm grateful. A new life. Those people who have been finding you cheap, cheap, that's the end. They have missed you today forever. Your tongue that speaks lies, that is the end. You are now living a new life. You are going from here. You are going to be the true candidate of heaven. Where is Satan? Let us sit and stand up. Let us see. He cannot do it anymore. Be sincere about it. Take the matter serious. Be angry against Satan. Why must he be trying to destroy you? Why? Why? Thank you, Jesus. 
Once again, I see the presence of God among you. I'm seeing the Lord showing you compassion. I'm seeing the Lord showing you love. And I'm happy for it. I'm happy for it. And say this after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Save my life. I will, I will follow you. Free me from my sins. Make me a child of God. Give me your garment of righteousness. I will not disappoint you. Wash me with your blood, Lord Jesus. Give me your spirit. Thank you for hearing me. In Jesus' name. Now I'm praying for you. Father, you love them. You have even shown, you are moved already towards them. Receive them. Save them from their sins. Wash them with the blood of Jesus. Make them new creatures. Let them be born again. Give them the joy of Christianity. Give them the life of righteousness. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, destroy satanic work in their lives. Satanic power. Destroy it. Free them who are in the power of witchcraft. Free them in Jesus' name. I cover them with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, it's time for everybody to be committed to Jesus. This is your time. Daniel purpose in his heart. Rise up upon your feet. Daniel, I want, I'm going to pray for you. The power of the Lord will come upon you to establish you in righteousness. Open your mouth and tell God you are ready to serve him. You tell him, tell, give you this Christianity. Make me holy. Oh Lord, holy. Make me holy. Oh Lord. In the morning, in the night, anytime you may come. Tell the Lord. Make me holy. Oh Lord. Say it now. Pray it. Don't sing only. Pray it out. Pray. Tell God. Tell God. Before I pray for you. Tell God. Promise him you will be holy. Then I will pray for you. Promise him. You are going to live above or above average. You are going to live the standard lie. All those jewelry, you are removing them. All those attachments, you are clearing them out of your life. Whoever will talk, let him go and talk. Whether your pastor, your husband, your anybody. You are ready for Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm so grateful. Let your power take over your people. Let your power strengthen your people. All of the spirit that was in Daniel, excellent spirit. Let the excellent spirit, O oh God, come into your people. Make them excellent in righteousness. Nothing should threaten them. Nothing should make them afraid. They will go and live this Christian life. Thank you, Lord. I'm so grateful. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus name. We pray. Now raise up your hand. I pray for you. Father. You are the one doing this last day's work. You are the one revisiting the church. With biblical righteousness. Oh Lord. Here are the people raising up their hands. They want biblical righteousness. They want the holiness that you want. They want to live acceptable Christian life. Therefore, Lord, I pray for the transformation of God over their lives. I pray that the Spirit of God will transform their lives. Will sanctify their hearts. In the name of Jesus. My Father, every fear of man. Every fear of person, fear of demons, fear of authority, fear of husband, fear of wife, fear of parents, fear of boss, any form. Lord, let it be dead in their lives. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord divine, I am praying they shall not, they shall not bother to die. Let them be willing to die. 
than to lose righteousness, than to be defied by any man. Oh Lord, do it for them, oh God, in Jesus' name. Father, wherever they are, in whichever church, may they win over the, the backsliding man there. Me, oh God, the authority of backsliding ministers, never light upon them. Protect them, oh Lord, in their churches. Father, let their voice be heard. And if it's, and if it's required by your wisdom and love, remove them from those churches. In the name of Jesus. I command you to receive power. I command you to receive power. I shall receive power. I shall receive power. In the name of Jesus. The grace of protection will come upon you. The grace of establishment in righteousness. The grace of sanctification. Will come upon your life. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. Let the light of Christ shine in your life. In the society. In the church. In your workplace. In the school. In your business place. In the market. In the family, let light shine in your life. Let your life so shine. Let your life so shine. Let darkness vanish out of your life. From today, you shall not see lie anymore. You shall not see anger anymore. You shall not see malice anymore. You shall not see bitterness anymore. You shall not see envy anymore. You shall not see resentment anymore. You shall not see hatred anymore. Today, you shall see joy. You shall see peace. You shall see righteousness. You shall see faithfulness. You shall see humility. In the name of Jesus. Give a clap offering to Jesus and thank him. That's what the Lord will do for you. Amen. And now final blessing is coming upon you. Ask what I shall give you. What do you want? That's the end. What do you want from God? I'm going to take your special request to him. Rest up your right hand. I'm taking your special requests. Tell him before I round it up. Your special request. Special. Special. Thank you, Jesus. Special. Pray for righteousness. Pray for holiness. Then ask what you want. Thank you, Lord. I'm so, the presence of God is here. I'm telling you. I'm so grateful. I'm so joyful. God has transformed this community. God has raised up righteous people here. Righteous men and women. Even young and old. Thank you, Jesus. This is good. God will put something in that hand. Rest up. He will put something in that hand. Rest up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty Father, this is the last day of this program. Father, you have raised up for yourself a people committed to righteousness and holiness. Ministers that are dedicated to truth, righteousness, and holiness. In this community, we bless your name, Lord. Thank you for this wonderful grace you have shown to your people. We praise you forever. Father, do it in other communities also. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, Lord, we are sending the people back. But Jesus said, these people have been with me for three days. I will give them to eat. That they will not go empty handed. Let some people fall down on the way. My father, oh Lord, let blessings come from heaven. This is the third day they are going. They will not go empty handed. They will not go empty handed. Oh Lord, shower your blessing. My God, shower your blessing. In the name of Jesus. Everybody, Lord, according to his satisfaction. 
according to that which will satisfy him. My God, release your blessing. My God, release your blessing. In the name of Jesus. I pray for the sick. Those that are sick among them. Every kind of sickness. Every kind of disease. Oh Lord, you said in your word. As you preach, heal the sick. You said, this sign shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall heal the sick. Oh Lord divine. I am commanding every kind of sickness in the bodies of these people. I am commanding every kind of evil spirit oppressing this kind of this, this people by the promise of God. I say, come out from their lives. Every manner of sickness. I say, come out from their bodies. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I pray for the blind. That their eyes will open by the power of our God. All those people with pains in the eyes, with darkness in the eyes, with cataract in the eyes, I command you eyes open. I say eyes in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, touch them and loose them. Anything that binds them, loose them, oh Lord divine. Deafness of the ears, set them loose. Dumbness of the mouth, set them loose. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, all kinds of body pains, all kinds of fever, all kinds of malaria, all kinds of headache, all kinds of Lord divine. I command, let them be healed now. I say be healed now. In the name of Jesus. My father set them free. Let them receive the healing. Oh Jesus, my father, I am praying for every sickness in the blood. Every sickness, hypertension, high blood pressure, father, cancer in the blood, sickle cell anemia, HIV, AIDS, every kind of sickness. May the blood of Jesus purify them. May the blood of Jesus purify them. In the name of Jesus, my father, do it. God, do it. Touch the, the, the legs of the limb. Release the paralyzed. My father, visit them. Every pain, pain in the back, pain in the stomach, stomach ulcer, pain in any part. By the authority of Jesus, your pain disappear. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord divine, I set free the barren womb. By the authority of God, everything blocking it, I come out. Get out from the way. In the name of Jesus. I am praying, Lord, let fruitfulness come upon married couples. The power to be fruitful. Let it come that those who are hopeless will see your wonders in their lives. Oh, Lord divine, I'm praying for businessmen, people looking for money, looking for business opportunity, looking for jobs. Answer their prayers. Answer their prayers. People looking for school. They want to go to school. Father, those who are in school, wanting to do well, wanting to pass their exams, answer their prayers. God, answer their prayers. I'm praying for people looking for progress. They're looking for promotion. They're looking for an appointment. They're looking for one thing or the other. My God, open the door now. God, open the door now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, every battle set against any man here. Battle from witches and wizards. Battle from neighbors. Battle from anywhere. Oh, God, I'm saying, you knew it. You who saw Nathaniel, when he was standing under a tree. Father, you have known them. You even know where the enemy is standing. Today, I take away the power of the enemy from him. I take away the power of the enemy from him. I say, let them be free. Be free in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for divine protection for those who are traveling in their houses, those who sleep. God, that they will be protected everywhere. Divine protection shall rest upon them. I'm praying for your ministers. God, they have come to learn. Their eyes have opened and they are crying for truth, they are crying for reality. Oh Lord, forgive them. Wherever they have gone wrong, God forgive them. Let a new covenant be made with them. A new agreement be made with them. 
to the glory of your name. Father, do it. Let them receive anointing of the Holy Ghost. Let them receive anointing of the Holy Ghost. Let them receive anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. My Father, let there be peace. Those who don't know peace, receive peace. I say receive peace. Receive joy in your life. I pray, Father, for our sister that you give vision for this program. And those who have worked and contributed with her, may the blessing of the Lord rest upon them. I'm praying that you will raise up zealous men, zealous women. Oh God, you will raise them up here. In Jesus' name, we pray. Say amen again. Is sealed up in your life. It is sealed up in your life. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4348. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe
you are the living Savior. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. You Lord. are my Lord and Savior. I believe you, Lord, cause you 